In our last tests with the dual thrust rocket we encountered a couple of problems and lower than expected performance, so this week we have a look at addressing some of those issues. Here is the previous configuration with the jet foaming spacer. The first problem we encountered is the blow through effect where high pressure air escapes past the water in the boost chamber. This reduces the force that ejects the remaining water in the chamber. The other problem was the vacuum generated in the boost chamber when the sustainer goes through its air pulse phase. As you can see here, it can collapse the bottle quite dramatically. To solve both of these issues, we added an extension tube to the jet foaming nozzle. This is a thin wall tube that extends past the end of the main nozzle. However, simply adding the tube would mean that we would lose the water self-leveling feature of the jet foaming spacer. So we added a non-return valve to the top of the extension tube. This valve allows water and air to flow upwards during pressurization and closes during launch. Here is the non-return valve with the inlets at the bottom and an o-ring sits inside a v-shaped groove. Each of the inlets connects to the bottom of the v-shaped groove so that when pressure is higher in the boost chamber, the o-ring moves out of the way and allows air and water to flow upwards. Shortly after launch, the pressure in the sustainer is higher and the o-ring prevents backflow through the inlets, forcing all the water to flow through the small nozzle. Here are the inlets, and here is the V-shaped groove with the holes connecting to the inlets. The o-ring sits inside the V-groove. This is the extension tube fitted to the non-return valve, and finally assembled with the spacer. So let's see that in action. In this close-up, you can see the blow-through has been eliminated during the boost water phase. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the extension tube and just the spacer. You can see the water column with the extension tube does not contain air during the water phase, unlike with the spacer. There is also no vacuum created in the boost chamber. The exhaust from the nozzle is also a lot cleaner. One problem we did encounter though was getting the water self-leveling feature to work properly. On the first attempt there was too much air entering the extension tube directly from the release head which meant that the sustainer chamber was being pressurized ahead of the boost chamber and so not enough of the water was being transferred as we can see here. So we added a thin tube to the release head to bypass the bottom of the extension tube. This worked well, but because the bottom of the extension tube offered less resistance than the non-return valve, more water was forced to, into the sustained chamber than was desired. With the last attempt, we partially blocked the extension tube in the release head and only then the non-return valve behaved itself and correctly self-leveled the water and pressurized both chambers. Here you can see the water being transferred to the sustained chamber and when it reaches the non-return valve, air starts flowing into the chamber to pressurize it. We did a total of 8 static tests on the day with the rocket mounted on the load cell so we could measure the thrust. For full details of the results and to see the actual thrust curves please visit the link in the description.